This video is sponsored by Zyro. Welcome back to another video and if you've watched how to master composition in photography you know exactly what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about five different simple composition techniques in photography or we can also say for you to pay attention to five different elements or five different sort of ways of composing your photos around certain elements or adopting certain ways of thinking. Now, in the last video about composition, we said that composition was more or less a decision that you make, conscious or unconscious, of how you're going to frame your photo. And that can be with perspective or it can be due to feelings, it can be due to whatever interests you. Now, in today's video, we're going to be breaking down images and I tried to give as many examples as I could of my own um, experience. So we're going to be talking and breaking down some of my own photos. And we're going to be talking about uh, key elements such as mood, um, such as perspective, the importance of balance. So there's a lot to talk about. And let me just plug in my website because down below you're going to find the link where I've uploaded video notes and these notes from this video in case it can be helpful for anyone. So you can, you know, check it out either during the video or after the video is over. And yeah, I guess that presentations or intros are all done and for till now. And I would just invite you to grab a drink, make yourself comfortable, and let's go straight to another video. Talking about composition in photography is all fine and dandy, but I wanted to highlight something first, and that is the importance of intention. And for that, I'm going to be showing you two examples of photos I've taken in two different occasions. And my goal with these two was to reflect or follow my themes of loneliness and alienation, although I would say these reflect solitude more than anything. And the main difference between these two compositions in the context of what I want to talk about is that the one on the left was planned and composed with a lot of attention to detail, whilst the one on the right was a spontaneous composition and a photo that I took while walking past these chairs whilst walking around. Now, these are examples of the importance of intention in composition, because intention, or at least a sort of theme or idea that we're fond of, can serve as a compass for our definition and decisions when it comes to composing a photograph. However, we can compose a photograph because it is visually appealing, because, you know, it is our job, because we have a model when we need to, you know, do a shoot with him or her, um, or because of many different reasons. However, what I'm trying to say here is that throughout the video, I'm going to be talking about different ways of composing, but I was always going to ask you to whatever you choose or whatever you feel like you pay more attention to, whether that is color, whether that is shapes, lines, etc. Just have in mind that you have to have your intention as a guide and let your intention or at least like looking for what you want as a theme or as a main idea in your photography be the guide for you and trust more of your instinct as a photographer. And with that being said and out of the way, Let's just dive into our first composition technique, which is around lines and shapes. And so talking about lines and shapes, if we do an exercise and we take a walk and look around us, we see there's a lot of imaginary lines formed by buildings, roads, bridges, cars, etc. And when it comes to composing with lines, it's exactly observing the way these lines intersect, the way they create patterns or create depth and how we can use this in our advantage. We can notice continuous patterns created by lines or shapes to easily understand the perspective that we need to adopt. Say, taking this image as an example, I use two leading lines to guide my perspective, and although this can easily be an example of composing in depth, the truth is, I remember when I was taking this photo, I first paid attention as to how the line in the foreground in a way played with the line in the background, that coincidentally leads to an opening in the bushes. 
And on a more different level and a more detailed level, if we take this image from Andre Cortez, we can see how the shapes he highlights almost have a triangular relationship, creating very interesting contrasts of darkness to light, and even the configuration of the table with its lines also suggests a triangle shape. Now, these are just a couple of simple examples of how you can compose around lines and shapes having in consideration leading lines so that you can compose around and adopt a perspective. And I know that sometimes we can go somewhere and we find ourselves in this beautiful place, but it's quite hard to establish a perspective or you want to sort of like adopt a different perspective. Like you've composed a photograph, you know, in a way and you want to adopt different perspectives. So it's easy to sort of like pay attention to shapes, objects, leading lines, also the relationships that lines have. And I think it's important to pay attention to this because sometimes these lights are just, these lines, sorry, are just created like organically or created by chance, the, due to the way that some buildings are predisposed, trees, you name it. But sometimes they're also created by light. And this is the cue for our second um, composition technique, which is of course very basic, composing around light. Now, lighting shapes, objects and details by creating highlights and shadows can be a good way to bring forward your intention. A highlighted area can provide an important cue to a specific texture or element you're trying to capture. And the same goes for shadows. Allowing an object, a face, etc. having proportions of darkness creates the same sense of importance or cue to something else. And I have four examples here of four different ways of observing light that helped me compose a photo. So the first one was taken in a forest nearby where I live and I was immediately attracted to the area in between the tree trunks where you can see a woman and a child and this paired with the reflected light and the effect of it going through the trees was definitely something I found interesting to capture visually speaking. On the second example though, it was about how light and shadows could definitely highlight my subject, since the perspective I adopted here was precisely one where we're closer to the shade and as a result distance increases and we have this open field and this burst of light and of course here the distance does help highlighting the subject since he is standing in an open field. But it's very interesting to observe light and contrast as a guide to place our subjects. Now the third and fourth examples are more detailed oriented and in here I remember looking at contrast and how these so-called brushes of light were in a way very visually appealing, highlighting some details, say the figures in the fresco and the redness on the wall. And on the second example, the way we have a warm morning light contrasting with that background blue tinted shadowed area really really captured my attention. Also, I'd like to make a brief note here about lighting with color, which I feel is very interesting and not really discussed when it comes to this type of videos. And it's something I came across when I was watching a specific movie and it really brought forward the idea of like those shoots that, you know, we see regularly in fashion photography, where you basically use like the cleanest, um, whitest light possible and you use filters to color your subject. And with that, we bring forward the idea of intention, we bring forward the idea of visually appealing and creating contrasts that are very, very interesting and can bring a lot into the image. And I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about today's sponsor, Zyro. Zyro is an online platform where I have my website and online store and where you can have yours as well. There's room for different projects from a blog to portfolio to a website for your brand or business. So let your ideas happen and take advantage of the different templates, the 24-7 customer support and the 30-day money-back guarantee to explore Zyra's products. So check the link down below or use the code HOPPER to get the best Zyra limited time deal where you can get an exclusive discount, a custom domain and three months for free with any yearly plan. And thanks to Zyro for sponsoring this segment and now let's go back to the video. Now, composing around space and depth can be a bit hard to explain in the sense that obviously I'm basing this video in all of my experiences and I use space in two very different ways of composing. And I can use, the, in the first way, I can use the openness or the closeness of a space in order to define a composition. And in a second way, I can use 
the architectural details of a space in order to establish a composition. And that can be the, you know, focusing on architectural details in relation to something else. But I'm going to be showing you a couple of examples that hopefully can clarify what I'm talking about. So here we have two examples of instances where I use trees and more enclosed spaces to define the composition by placing the subject in a sort of opening that the space naturally provided. But then we have two other examples where I have two open spaces where I used either the lines or the natural textures and shapes of the area to place my subject and compose my photo around. But to me, when composing with space, one of the most important things is to pay attention to balance. If we look at all the four examples here, I think they're all balanced and there's a sort of visual harmony precisely because either the lines create a sort of equal division or there are leading lines that center the subject. But when composing around open or more enclosed spaces, we need to pay attention to how this affects the mood of the photo. And the mood is a very important word in any visual art form because it establishes the sort of energy the viewer is going to be met with. And I think even though these photos reflect loneliness, the truth is that they have a calming nature about them. And in photography, mood works the same way as if you were to set a tone in a poem. And when it comes to composing with architectural details, it's all about paying attention to the little details in a house, a building, and use them in relation to what's around them. Or say, if you were to photograph someone, use those details to create perspective, depth, or bring something forward or around the subject to cast more importance in them. And in these two examples, I use precisely the structure of the building and the lines it creates to create an interesting contrast with a more rugged and rocky surface in the background. Whereas in the second example, I use the detail from the window and balcony rail to define my composition, which adding to the morning light created a very peaceful mood. And when it comes to depth, it's about using the distance between foreground and background and more distant areas to define your composition. So analyzing this idea, if you break down your surroundings, you can easily identify lines, more immediate areas and more distant areas. In essence, foreground and background and use that to establish a composition in depth, either by identifying your main subject, if it's in the landscape or space you're photographing, or by placing your subject within specific areas of the shot. Now, composing with color means that you more or less have to sort of break your image or break what's around you into blocks of color. Now, how can this be helpful? I think that there's two main things we can um, discuss when it comes to the importance of color in photography or composing around color and that is its temperature and its saturation. Whether if we have a lot of brightness or faded or muted tones, whether we have um, more um, say warm colors or more sort of colder colors, that immediately affect the way you're gonna compose. And this helps you in the sense that it makes you establish relationships between colors, whether there are contrasting colors, complementing colors, if there's any pattern created by different colors or a simple visual appealing color explosion. And in these two following photos, it's something that I usually love to do, which is photographing by the sea. And I like how the sea sort of combines with the sand and there's this sort of division between two different areas. And to me, if we had to talk about this in an hypothetical way, it really reminds me of two inks blending with each other. And this is why I sort of adopt this sort of composition because I really like how the two blocks of color remind me precisely of two different inks mixing. Whereas this last example, I remember composing it specifically around color because I really found this reflection very interesting because we have a natural fade from blue to this warm orange. Now, composing by feeling, what does this mean? I think for me, theoretically, it means that feelings equals breaking all rules. In the sense that we talked before um, about the importance of intention and letting intention guide you. However, sometimes it's very important to keep in mind that we have to let or we have to trust our instinct as photographers. And we have to let our instinct guide us. And when we do that, we tend to do things by impulse, naturally. and we don't care about rules 
And to be completely honest with you, I feel like you should always just go by what you want. And you know, if you're breaking rules, you're breaking rules. You're just being yourself. And that's the most important thing, capturing your vision of the world, your vision, nobody else's. And in order to shoot guided by feeling and instinct, I think it's very important to be in a moment, just like Joel Myrit says, to focus on what's around us, colors, movements, motion, and not think too much. Just instead snap and worry or think about whether it worked or not later on. And I think it really is a great exercise to grow as a photographer if we just focus on the moment, on what's happening, and sort of close our minds to distractions, other thoughts or worries. And as we can see by the following examples, I wasn't particularly focused on lines and perspectives. I was just going by the feeling that it was the right time and the right moment and a good moment to capture without taking everything too seriously and obeying any rules. And this has been all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful in any way, shape or form. Don't forget that the video notes will be down below. And just a quick disclaimer, I wanted to say that this video is based on my experiences only. Of course, I did some research, but I tried to use as much um, as possible uh, images that I've taken. And again, I'm not formally trained in photography. This is just me as a photographer for quite some time now, but I still have a lot to go through and I still have a lot to evolve and learn. And hopefully I'll be sharing that on a channel. And please let me know down below, what have you been doing? Uh, what's your thoughts on the video? Like if you have anything that can be constructive towards composition, uh, any thoughts that can be helpful to other people as well that can complement the video or complete the video in a way. And yeah, I guess that it's all about keeping in touch because you do get to see a lot of what I share here. So I'd like to know what have you been doing? And before we go, special thank you to everyone who's been ordering prints. It really, really means a lot. And uh, links to that will be down below if you'd like to grab one. And if you have any problems or anything or any questions at all, you can always reach out to me via Instagram or my email. And yeah, I guess that it's been all for today. Thank you to Zyra for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. So I'll see you around for another video very soon. Take care, stay safe, keep shooting film, subscribe for a cookie and I'll see you here soon. Peace. <music>